He still thought they, they have things pretty under control. It's a very solid institution. Nobody believes that now. And Biden can't get a sentence out. You're like, Break it down, Joe. I like it. Joe Rogan, you need to have a conversation with Bill Maher. Hey, what's up, you all? Welcome back. I am Van, and we are all the LFR family. Thank you so much for clicking play. Hopefully, you click the like button for me as well, okay? Please click the like button. That would be amazing. And if you love the video later on, feel free to subscribe to the channel. That would be amazing, too. Go to LFRfamily.com when you get a moment and ask me about the Bang Bang Tea. So, we got another video we're about to check out. I'm just going to warn y'all. I have checked out two videos within the last hour that I had to stop mid video. I couldn't take it. All right. So I don't believe that this would be one of them because these two gentlemen, they usually discuss things that I can, I can, I can deal with, you know what I mean? And we're going to gain something. We're going to learn something from this. I already know it. So Russell Brand and Joe Rogan are, are lifting the veil of corporate political of the corporate political establishment in this video. Joe Rogan experience. When we talk about what are the ideologies that drive us, the ideology of... Man, this brother's so damn cool, bruh. Like, he's so cool, man. I like that. Shout out to Russell Brand. That's my guy right there. That, he's, he's a cool cat, for real. Progress. This is why I have sometimes am skeptical, not about technology, the mastery and the geniuses that work in that field, but how technology and science as a subset of our economic ideology can create exactly the conditions that you are describing and that that journalist has exposed. That if your ideology permits that, then what kind of ideology is that? What kind of unconsciousness are we living in? It's not an awareness awakened culture and all of the discourse around like you know how we treat one another as individuals and progressivism culturally in domestic territories hey people are should be allowed to do this and that it's all it's a nonsense right. if that is permitted not only permitted required it's a requirement you cannot have that economic model without that price being paid and as a culture whether it's me as an individual or our entire culture we've he, but this brother's talk so damn fast. I don't even know what the hell he's talking about, to be honest with you. I'm trying to follow along, but I'm like, dude, slow the hell down, Russell. <laughs> slow the hell down, bro. <laughs> Jeez. I'm really trying to follow along, man. But you are just... And, and, and then you speaking in your little... I don't even know what to call it. A certain dialect that I, I'm trying to catch on to. Sheesh. Accepted that contract. We've accepted those terms. Well, we we have in some areas of our life for sure. You know, hopefully people haven't done that in their interpersonal, intimate relationships, but we certainly have in the way we communicate with others. We we've certainly accepted like very bizarre ways of communicating online. I love how Joe Rogan always looks like a podcaster. <laughs> You know what I mean? He always He's already he's always really close. I'm really close to the mic and I'm saying something worth listening to and I'm going to speak in a nice quiet voice where I uh, I'm really soothing to my own ears cuz I'm listening to myself while I'm speaking and this does not sound bad at all. He always looks like a podcaster, man. Always. Like everybody he's talking to it's always so laid back and chill and everything. And him, he always is just so dialed in. Yes, ASMR is what it is because if you have one of those type of voices, it's just soothing. It's soothing. I'm not saying his voice is soothing, but he certainly believes his voice is soothing, which is dope. You, if, if you, it's real. And sometimes that bleeds out into real life, like where someone talks to people in the real world as if they're on Twitter and they get bashed podcast, like, yo. You, you see that sometimes i think it's a it's a very strange time where we i don't think people have a, a lot of faith right now in institutions and i don't think they have a lot of faith in authority no, don't. i don't think mm -hmm. they really believe that there is someone who is wiser than them that has a grand plan that's logical that's that's workable where they're looking out for all of us. So I think there's like a, a, a feeling of chaos that exists today that I don't think has ever existed in my life like this before. That's because people are starting to realize what it's all about, that people are lining their pockets and their friends' pockets and their friends' friends' pockets and their friends' 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 pockets. Sometimes their friends are domestic and sometimes their, their friends are in other countries and starting to realize, you know what? 
maybe it's not about us. Maybe it's just about them getting rich and having legacies for their families. And we're just pawns because guess what? We are thinking people. We, we, we know how to think for ourselves. So when we start thinking for ourselves and we realize that two plus two equal five, then we are, and we no longer believe in the system for even back during like the Bush administration, when they thought, you know, everybody thought Bush was a moron. They, they still thought this is a good cabinet and they, they, they're following all the checks and balances, even though they're probably extracting too much money and they probably, there's probably a lot of cronyism and a lot of undercover cronyism. deals and a lot of like no Absolutely. bid contracts with Halliburton and Absolutely. that kind of nonsense. He still thought they, they have things pretty under control. It's a very solid institution. Nobody believes that now. You see Pete Buttigieg, Kamala Harris and, and Biden can't get a sentence out. You're like, Break it down, Joe. I like it, man. Keep going, brother. This is madness. These yes, people are utter fools. Yes, it is. And these are the people that are running everything. And these are the people that are getting us on the brink of war with Russia. You need to, Joe Rogan, you need to have a conversation with Bill Maher. That's who needs to have a conversation with Bill Maher because I believe you will call him out. Because I thought that he was moving closer to the middle. Not until I checked out his interview with Jake Tapper on CNN and uh, Ram, uh, yeah, he lost it. I think if it's Biden against Trump, Biden will win. He could do the job of president perfectly fine, and I think he's done the job perfectly fine. And you need to dag on speak some sense into that brother's head, man. And I don't have any faith in them, and I think most people don't. I think you're right. And with the um, that era of the Cheney, Bush, Wolf of its Rumsfeld, it felt like, oh, these are the Death Star bods. Yeah. This, what's happened is there's this risen up military industrial complex, Rand Foundation ideologues from the Republican right, who were the sanctioned baddies back in those yeah. days, are trying to uh, yeah, profit from the colonization of the Middle East. It's part of a new American project. We sort of understood it. But in the, from where I'm coming, from it was somehow recognizable and a million people went on a march to prevent that yeah. war taking place because they knew there were no weapons of mass destruction which we now know to be the truth and as you say now the figures that are in that place are sort of posing as the good guys like affable and avuncular presidents and sort of affable and avuncular presidents what where's my dictionary i swear to goodness when this brother starts speaking and i love the fact that you're so educated man but god gracious Goodness gracious, I got to at least know how to spell it in order to look it up. I'm not about to do that live on TV. I'm live on LFR Family TV. I'm not about to do that and make myself look foolish. Friendly people of, like, you know, that across the identitarian spectrum that's meant to feel inclusive and progressive. Yeah, they're wrapping themselves up with progressive identity politics and then promoting a war. Yes. It's, at the same time. It's very wild. Yeah, it feels like a, a, a wow. mask and a veil. Like, this is what's interesting for me is like, as we navigate this new and emergent space of being able to prevent, present counter narratives uh, and continually, like all of us now, of like experience, oh, you're a right wing conspiracy theorist. You've joined the alt right. You're a gateway to this, the dark, yeah. all of that language that grows up around it. Like, the, this, and I've heard you speak about this obviously a lot, but the, the truth is that who isn't sympathetic? Who, anyone that's got a family or loves someone is sympathetic to the idea that people that's are right. going to have various types of identity that's around right. culture and Absolutely. religious expression and Absolutely. racial expression. And uh, this is a conversation that the whole culture has to be involved in together. That's what right. My issue is I don't think they believe in that stuff. I don't think they care. I don't think that they are creating they an agenda care. to advance the interests of vulnerable you people. I think they are using it that's as right. a distraction and a veil in order to carry on with the same kind of corporate and financial interests that have always determined what the establishment is. And if there's one... Yeah, and God damn it again, Russell. Listen, let me tell you something. Uh, something, I, something I learned about Joe Rogan, he will let you talk. Like, you can actually stop and breathe. And guess what? He's going to allow you to finish your thought. Y'all are going to be there talking for like three hours. Sheesh. I get it. You came ready. You came ready to talk. And discuss things. And all you're saying is absolutely the truth. Like they're making us look over there while they do things over here. Kids, go in your rooms. <laughs> we about to dag on. We about to, I'm about to make love to your mother. Kids, go in your rooms. Look over there. One thing we can point to in our lifetime is that the liberal establishment has become co-opted by the same forces that traditionally we regarded the right to have been co-opted by military, yeah. industrial complex, financial industry. Yeah. And there's now like, there's palpable evidence for that. And in order to not 
acknowledge that that transition's taken place, they're able to keep the cultural conversation going. We care about your right to express yourself and your identity. That's a way of not acknowledging we're just the same. We're pro-war. Yeah. And now when there's that war, you know, like Jimmy Dore and all those guys did that anti-war march in Washington or whatever, it's like 5,000 people go. Now, I don't know if that's because of the last few years and what the pandemic mixed done to people accumulating and gathering crowds or whether people have lost their the belief and faith that people have any can have any impact on politics anymore there's just now this immersive sense of apathy this as you say loss of trust in in institutions and authority but something extraordinary has happened when people that say that they're you know we're the peace and love party are the party that are advocating for war won't include some of the complex conditions that have led to this current crisis which this is clearly a case for uh, like, you know, NATO's infringement on Russian territory, the 2014 coup, and I'm not telling you anything you don't know. But, like, it's extraordinary that those conversations... I'm not sure if I trust Russell Brand because he talks and talks and talks. I get it you have something to say, bruh, bruh. You just keep freaking talking. You are the guest. And, yeah, you came there to talk. This is a podcast. Yes, people are listening. You're supposed to talk. But so is Joe. Supposed to talk, stop, listen, respond. Like you're doing a whole lot of talking, bro. And yes, you are dropping science, but it's to the point where it's like the talking is getting over top of everything else. That da, 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 da. conversations don't happen. Right. It's like actually, like the post Trump and post pandemic, everything sort of enters into that template. There are certain things you're not allowed to say now. If you mm -hmm. sort of say, did were Russia in any way provoked? Is there any legitimacy to this uh, to their military uh, to, to their military actions from their perspective? That's the same as saying, oh, I don't think you should take certain medications or maybe masks right. aren't necessary. And people aren't, it doesn't seem that the culture is learning. It doesn't seem that the, 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 the as the evidence is evolving, that people are saying, oh, wow, look, the stuff you were being told two years ago now, the things you couldn't say online two or three years ago, now there's evidence for that. In fact, I've bought documentation in case the conversation went in this direction, Joe, in my new position as a legitimate investigative journalist. I've got actual <laughs> papers that I can and show you from conspiracy to fact. I don't know what to say. <laughs> so, folks, when, when it comes to drugs, you got uppers, <laughs> you got downers. <laughs> and uh, weed is usually a downer, right? But I'm not too sure, and I'm not going to speculate on the uppers. But maybe that was just a natural Russell brand. I don't know. <laughs> that brother was going for it. I, I think every single time he saw Joe Rogan about to talk, he stepped it up some more. <laughs> hey, what movie was that where, um, where uh, Will Ferrell was racing in cars? He said, I just want to go fast. First, um, if you're not first, you're last. <laughs> what movie was that? <laughs> we said, if you're not first, you're last. I think that's Russell Brand's motto when having a conversation, right? <laughs> if you're not first, you're last. Just want to go fast. Talladega Nights. <laughs> Talladega Nights. Russell Brand is Talad the Talladega Nights of podcasting, right? He by far is the Talladega Nights of podcasting he is very smart extremely intelligent i can tell he learns uh, he just spends a great deal of his time reading and studying and preparing and he's always ready i get it i got it i want to be just like you when i grow up but bruh Usa. maybe that's just his style